everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. So we're in the home studio because uh, our new studio is being built right now. So by the time you see this, hopefully we will be fully up and running at 1001 Cross Timbers in Flower Mound. Anyway, I wanted to answer the question about what do you do or how do you find space or room to breathe when somebody is smashing you. So we'll use, in this case, we'll use our cross side one. Should we use cross side one or cross side two? Let's go with cross side one. So um, Lee is gonna be on his back, or David rather. Nick is gonna be on top. Nick is the bigger guy. And he's just gonna go and put weight on him. Okay, so when you hear the uh, then you know that you're putting weight on well. So right now the weight's being concentrated on David's uh, floating rib cage area right here. So Nick's goal is to hold him down and to put some weight on him, make it hard for Lee to breathe and also keep him, make it hard for him to move. So one of the things you need to do is you can't just tap from here, okay? This is not an excuse to tap. A lot of times you go, oh, the pressure's so bad, I'm gonna tap. No, you need to withstand it and you need to just stay on. David's a brown belt, he can handle it, right? So what you need to do if you're in David's position is find a way to make a little bit of room so you can breathe, right? And first ask your question, Right? Am I going to die? No, he's not going to die here. Am I going to get injured? No, I'm not going to get injured. So suck it up and find a place to move so you can breathe. So let's see where David will move to try to get some air. Good. Got his arm in. Nick already sees that he's going to be escaping. He's going to transfer out of cross side one, get to cross side two, put weight on him, and try to keep that pressure on him. David's going to, I guess he's doing well. What he does, he lifted up. So his lungs can expand underneath him right now. So he's actually pretty comfortable. At this point, he's using his hips to hold Nick up. So Nick, try to put pressure on him and go ahead and move to get out. So now David's going to try to get to his side. See, he can breathe now. It's not comfortable. Nick's following him. So at this point here, David can breathe just fine. Nick's trying to stay on him, trying to keep the pressure on. And you see David is now out. Okay? So that was an example from cross side one. Cross side one is a place where a lot of people get crushed and they hate it. And um, when, I, when I do seminars, when I stop, you know, I also often ask, what's the one position that I could help you guys with? And they say, get out of side control. Some people call it side control, side mount. We call it cross side here. So that's one example. So let's say another one is um, Nick is mounted on David and he's got you know, a chest to chest, a heavy smothering type of mount. Right? And he's heavy on him in this way. So, David now needs to find a way to breathe first. His legs are hooked here. What he's going to do, lift his hips up, get his frame in, get to his side best he can. So now he's at a point where he can breathe, right? And this is really the important part from here. Now that you can breathe, take your breath, but now you've got to continue to move on with your escape. So he's going to continue on with the hip escape. Nick's going to try to keep pressure on him, keep the weight there, try to hold on. Now David obviously can breathe. Right, and now he's out. Okay, so what's another where place where where we might have a hard time breathing? Um, north south. Mm, yeah, north south. Okay, so let's say uh, David's on his back, Nick's on top, and north south, and Nick's got some pressure on him. And sometimes you're getting smothered, and you may be able to breathe completely fine but you don't see the way out. And because you don't see the way out, you often get into a state of panic. You start to kind of lose it in the mind a little bit and you start to move a little spastically. In the meantime, the guy on the top knows to just stay on top of you and tire you out. So what you need to do, in the, if you're in David's space, you need to calm down. You need to place your hands where they need to go. First question is always, where do your hands go? So <clears throat> David's framing the hips. He's gonna swing and he's gonna get out. Boom. And now he gets out that way, okay? But if you look at it, you know, Nick's, Nick's a pretty heavy, heavy guy. I mean, 210 pounds or so. Um, and he knows how to put weight on. You know, Dave is a lot lighter. Probably Dave's about, what, 165-ish? Yep. Um, but look at him. He's not even breathing through his mouth. I mean, it's, it's just being calm. It's a state of mind, um, knowing that you're not going to die in a position. But it really comes from David having done this, you know, thousands of times already. And knowing that he's not going to die, so there's no reason to panic. Just think through your steps in your defense. So one of the ways that you as a practitioner you know, in your hometown 
can do this is to think about the the sequence at which you need to get out of a position. A lot of times we don't worry about defense, we only worry about offense. We only want to know how to keep, how to choke people out, how to arm bar them, how to do whatever, how to foot lock them, heel hook, any of that stuff. But we don't know how to get out of stuff. And getting out of stuff is far more important than getting into stuff. So the more you play on your back and the more defense you play, the more you get out of stuff, the more you become like Dave, comma, says, you know, get to the point where your opponent cannot beat you. And if you can get to the point where they cannot beat you, then you have no choice but to beat them at the end of the day because no matter what they do on top of you, whether they try to pin you, whether they try to smother you, whether they try to submit you, you, you know the appropriate ways to get out based on every position. So one of the ways you can, you can figure how do we do that is just simply go to our website at kamajujitsu.com and sign up for the Kama Jiu Jitsu online modules. And we have all the defense that we do in there and it's a constantly building site. So what you, what you see in there now is not necessarily what's gonna be in there three months, six months, a year from now. We've been constantly adding to that site. Uh, but our curriculum modules are on there and that's what we teach our students here in the studio. And we'd love for you to get exposed to that as well and kind of learn how we do things. Anyway, that's all I got for you. We've got to run class. Take care. Happy training. Bye now.